Hello again, it's time for part two of lesson 6.5 and this is all about compound interest. So if you have a future in banking, this one could be for you. Or if you want to make good investments, who doesn't? Well, maybe you don't in seventh grade, but eventually you will. So this is gonna be kind of important to you later on because if you work hard for your money, you don't wanna waste it and you want your money to make as much money as it can. So that's kind of what this is all about. What is compound interest? It's interest earned on the principal or starting amount and on the previously earned interest. The balance Y of an account earning compound interest is, so this is yet another equation, but it's still, I hope you notice, in Y equals A times B to the X power. This is still an exponential form. It's just how you get the factor is a little different and what we have to do to get the time is also a little bit different. So what do all of these things mean? Well, P is the principal or the initial amount, which makes sense because isn't A also the initial amount, the starting point? So when you're given principal, that's the A because that's your starting amount. R is the annual interest rate, and of course it's in decimal form. So R, usually in the math story, story problem, this is given to you as a percent. This is the one where you have to divide by 100 in order to make it a decimal. T is still the time and it's always in years, so if you're given months, you'll have to fix that up. And then N is the number of times the interest is compounded. Add that, I'm gonna add the word on here, years will have it on there. My text box was just a little too small. So N is the number of times the interest is compounded. So it says N times T, this means that the number of times the interest is compounded in a year, which if you don't know what I'm talking about right now, you will in a minute, because we see the word compounded like four times, so I'll explain. You take that number times t, and that's the power that you're raising this to. And this n right here, yeah, that's the number of times. So n has two places in this problem. Okay, so compounded annually means one time per year. So if you ever hear the words, you know, we're having our annual sale, that means that once a year they have a sale. I'm sure you've heard of Kohl's semi-annual sale because they have commercials everywhere. Semi-annually means two times per year. So if your interest in an account is compounded semi-annually, that means that they're gonna fix this rate. They're gonna do it twice a year. If you get something compounded quarterly, quarterly means four times per year. And compounded monthly means 12 times a year. So once every month. This is once every three months, this is once every six months, and this is one at once every 12 months. But because T is supposed to be time in years, we look at this per years, or per year, sorry. All right, so how do you do this? And yeah, there are really just three examples here, and they're all kind of the same example, but I want you to see how compounding differently affects your balance, okay? so. Suppose your parents deposited $1,500 in an account paying 6.5% interest compounded yearly when you were born. Find the account balance after 18 years. So I'm guessing this is, you know what, we're gonna give them a kind of a little head start with college and when you were born, that's when we have money. Before you're born, we have money. And then after we have no money. It's crazy how that goes. I don't know, is there any correlation? All right, I'll stop picking on you, I'm sorry. All right. So, we want to know, after 18 years, if I have $1,500 in this account, how much is there now? Well, you might be thinking, isn't there just $1,500? No. Banks will actually pay you a percentage of your money for keeping your money in their bank. We'll have a little bit more of a discussion about that in class. Um, I'd rather be able to have the discussion when we can dialogue about it. But yeah, if banks make money off of your money, and they pay you, you a small percentage of that. So. This right here, the amount that you deposit, this is your starting amount, right? So that's gonna be P. The account pays 6.5%, that's R, right? And then it's compounded yearly. So that means one time per year. And let's see, that means N equals one. Find the account balance after 18 years. So that's the time that's given. So this will be your time this is yearly means n equals one so we do have all the information that we need so let's plug this all in and see if we can figure it out i'm sure we can y equals and i'm just looking back up at the equation i know you can't see it anymore but it's 
on this screen, but it's right on your paper. Y equals, we're supposed to take the principal, which we said is 1,500, and I'm going to multiply that by, this is just like the last lesson where you have to add the 1, 1 plus, okay, it says R needs to be in decimal form, so I need to take this 6.5%, I need to take 6.5 divided by 100 before I plug that in for R, when you take 6.5 divided by 100, you get 0 0.065, then in the formula it says divide that by n. So this is compounded once a year. So the number of times it's compounded per year is 1, so I divide that by 1. And I'm supposed to raise that to n times the amount of time in years. So this says 18 years, so this is 1 times 18. Let's clean this up just a little bit before you type it in. I have y equals 1500 Order of operations says do this first. Well, when you divide a number by 1, it stays the same. And 1 plus 65 thousandths is 1.065. 0, and 1 times 18 is 18. So type all that in. Type in 1,500 times the quantity of 1.065 to the 18th power. And when you do that, you're going to get this decimal. We're dealing with money, right? So please don't write that entire thing. When you deal with money, you stop at the hundredths place. So I want to stop two places to the right of the decimal point. The number next to the hundredths place is 1. That means that I leave that 8 alone. So the amount of money that I'm dealing with here is $4,659.98. So this original amount of $1,500 that was invested, if you don't touch it, you leave it there for 18 years, that turns into that amount of money instead. Your money makes money for just sitting in a bank. Isn't that exciting? All right. The next example, too, it's the same scenario. Your parents deposit $1,500. It pays 6.5%. This time, the interest is going to be compounded quarterly when you were born. So instead of compounded yearly, it's now com compounded quarterly. And we said the quarterly means four times a year, so that means the N equals four. All the rest of these are going to be the same. So in your equation, our principal is still 1,500. I'm taking 1 plus 0 0.065 divided by the number of times it's compounded, which now it's 4. And I'm supposed to raise that to the power of the number of times it's compounded times the amount of time. So that's a little bit different, right? Okay, let's clean this up a little bit before we type it in. This means y equals 1,500. And you can just type it in just like that. Type in 1 plus 0 0.065 divided by 4. And you get 1.01625. And when you take 18 times 4, we have 72. I don't mind if you do all of that in your calculator, but I think on your notes it's nice to see the progression from here to here. So on your homework assignment, if you just typed that in, like you wrote that down and typed it in and gave me the answer, I'm okay with that too. Okay, plug all that in. Let's see if we get an amount that's different than that. Again, I'm typing it in because I know I talk fast and I want to make sure I give you enough time. This time, you got that. Again, I don't want to write that entire thing. I want to round to the nearest hundredths place. So if you look over, that's a zero. So I'm going to stop at the 75 cents. So if it's compounded quarterly, we get 4,787.75. So what do you think? Does it make a difference? Yes. And I'm guessing you're seeing that the more they compound it, the better off you are, right? So look for that. How often do you compound your interest? Ask that question. All right, last one. This time, same scenario, but it's going to be compounded monthly. That means that n is going to be equal to 12. It happens 12 times a year. So same thing. Plug it all in. The principal is still 1,500. Now I'm going to take 1 plus. I need to change my percent to a decimal. Divide that by the number of times it's compounded. And I want to raise that to the, take the number of times it's compounded times the number of years which is 18. This time, why don't you go ahead and type that whole thing in. So 
So I would want to type in 1500. Let's see where you did. Okay. And then in my parentheses, I'm going to have 1 plus 0 0.065 divided by 12. Your calculator will automatically know to divide by 12 first. It knows what of vibrations. I'm going to raise that to the 12 times 18 power. Now, if your calculator did this and it brought it up, then you can just type in 12 times 18. If it didn't, you're going to want to put parentheses around the 12 times the 18. It can't hurt. I would just use the parentheses all the time instead of trying to remember when to use them. When you hit enter, you get that, which is more than the last one that we had, right? So you're seeing the more times it's compounded, the better it is for you. I want to stop at, at this place here, so the number next to that 5 is 4 or less. So that means I'm going to leave it off at 75. So this amount would be y equals $4,817.75. So again, that $1,500 after 18 years of not touching it now becomes close to $5,000. So it's, it's worth it to leave that money alone and to save it because your money, yes, can actually make money. See you tomorrow.